welcome back to Trees and Turtles. My name is Imogen and in today's video I'm sharing how I booked a budget trip to Europe, 10 countries for just £900. If you're not already subscribed, make sure to do that, give this video a thumbs up, follow me on Instagram and let's get started. So the number one step that you need to do is to have a plan, okay? And I'm not just talking about a vague plan, I need you to make a specific itinerary. So plan exactly what you want to do and exactly where you want to go. You need to know your exact itinerary down to the date and time you need to get each form of transport, okay? So I'm going to need you to plan all the places you want to go and then how you're going to go between them and then the time that you're going to go between each of them and then where you're going to stay each night. I made a table with every like day and night of the trip and I planned what I was doing and which city I was staying in. So like on the left I'd have the date and then on the right I'd have like the thing I was doing so where I was staying that night or like the plan that I had during the day. Okay, so number one you absolutely need to have a plan. Number two, you need to optimise your route. I mean, this kind of goes with the first step, but look for the most efficient route between all of your target places. You can easily do this by like adding more waypoints onto a route in Google Maps. Also, stick to bigger cities. So bigger cities have lots of travel connections and so there are often more options for actual budget travel. I found the part that the parts of my trip which were less easily accessible ended up costing me more. Um, with one exception, namely Geneva, I only plan to travel to capital cities and obviously Geneva is still extremely well connected. Technically the capital is Bern, but like Geneva is a big, big hub for Switzerland. So yeah, also, Let's now talk about travel. So the actual booking travel part, the first thing you absolutely need to do, of course, is compare travel prices, okay? So compare travel prices between different modes of transportation and different booking sites. There's a wonderful website I found, and I'm going to drop it in the description, it's called Rome to Rio, and basically you can search up any destination, and you just plug it in, and then you plug in your sort of point of origin, and it will tell you all the different ways to get there, so you could probably like, bus, train, fly, drive, and it'll tell you how long each one will take, the route it'll take, and how much it will cost, and then you can directly book tickets, like it's linked to ticket booking sites like Omeo and Flixbus, so it's like genuinely your one-stop shop and I am not even sponsored, I just love this website so much. So anyway, I'll drop it in the description, but you can compare all of the best ways to get from anywhere to anywhere, and I do genuinely mean anywhere, you can, like literally, I was searching up the most random places just for fun to see if it would work, and it did. So, Rome to Rio, guys. Also, my second travel point is overnight buses. Overnight buses are the biggest life hack, and I'll tell you why. I have three of these in my itinerary over 10 days, and they're a super, super cheap way to travel. Firstly, buses are usually one of the cheapest ways to travel because they tend to take a long time. So the downside of an overnight bus is it takes a long time, but you're cutting down on accommodation costs because you don't actually, you're traveling and sleeping at the same time, like on the bus. So firstly, the bus is cheaper anyway. Secondly, you don't have an accommodation cost. And third, you have more time because you're traveling overnight, which means you don't have to like sleep in a city. You can actually spend more time in the city because you just arrive in the morning and then you can go sightseeing at like 7 a.m., okay? So it's not for everyone. Obviously, you won't sleep as well on an overnight bus, but if you're like me and you're young and in your 20s and you're looking for a really good way to budget travel and also save time, overnight buses are the way to go. Obviously you can't do it every night but a few nights can really help your budget. Right, next, let's talk accommodation. So like you compare travel prices, you are going to compare accommodation prices. I tended to compare them between like Airbnb and then Booking.com. Uh, sometimes the same accommodation is listed for different prices on different sites. Like I found the same flat for like 10 euros cheaper on Booking.com than it was on Airbnb and I was like, okay, weird I guess, but anyway, I booked it. But anyway, the point is, sometimes an Airbnb is cheaper, sometimes like another site is cheaper. Sometimes I went Airbnb, sometimes I went hotels. Um, a couple of times I went for hostels, also, on that point, don't be afraid to stay in hostels, okay? Look for good reviews, but they can be a super cost-effective way to travel. Usually they have lockers and stuff, so everything's really secure. And if you don't mind sharing a room, like, risking snoring strangers, then it's absolutely, like, one of the best ways to save money. I actually, when I went to Bruges, I, for a music festival, I stayed in a hostel, and it was a really, really good experience. I mean, there were, like, three other women in the same room and yeah I just sort of crashed there for the night and they even gave me breakfast in the morning so often hostels also include breakfast which is also a really good way to save on food costs. 
Okay, now let's talk about sightseeing. So choose sightseeing activities that are very cheap or free. Like you can spend between literally nothing and thousands of pounds on sightseeing. So on a budget, you want to go for as many like cheap options as possible. Some good ones include literally wandering around a town and looking at like the historical landmarks. Um, a lot of like museums, churches, like sort of historical landmarks, parks are often free. So really you're there to see the place. And yeah, if you go to an attraction that's sort of really, really key to the actual, like the place. So for example, when I'm in Geneva, I am going to see like the UN headquarters and yeah, a tour of that does cost money. So I will like spend some money on that. But the point is a lot of the time you can get away with just going to a lot of free stuff. And there is a lot of stuff that's amazing that you can see for free. So you don't necessarily have to spend a lot of money on sightseeing. Um, and often if you look up on TripAdvisor, the sort of top 10 places in a city to go, like a lot of them will genuinely be free or really, really cheap. So life hack. Right, next, let's talk timing, okay? So firstly, you need to book your trip in advance, okay? Last minute trips are unlikely to be cheap, okay? You might get lucky, you might get lucky with the airline prices like suddenly going down, but you don't wanna rely on it, okay? So book months in advance. I personally booked in January for a June trip. Also, going during like school term time really helped. I was lucky that like my university term finished earlier so I could actually go. But if you're booking like out of school term, it's gonna be so, so much cheaper. And this was the same for my San Francisco trip, actually. If I booked flights in August, then it would have been way more expensive than booking flights in July, which is weird, but that's how it works, okay? Market economics. Also, you have to be willing to move fast, okay? My trip is 10 days long, so I'm seeing a new city every day and I'm spending some time each day moving between cities. Now, this kind of travel is not for everyone, but I wanted to get the sort of the most bang for my buck I guess, um, if, the, if that's the phrase. And I just wanted to see as many possible like new countries and new cities in a short amount of time because I had like limited time, limited budget. And I just really wanted to make the most of my time in Europe. So yeah, fast moving itinerary can really be helpful. Also, also plan your typical day. So for me, I plan to see the cities in the morning and around lunchtime. And then my sort of late afternoon, early evening was my travel window. Okay. And if I was going to an Airbnb in the next city, or if I was going on an overnight bus, I'd have more sightseeing time until the late evening. And then I get the overnight bus in the plan. Okay, the next thing I gotta to talk to you about is tracking your spending, okay? Because you gotta keep track of how much you're spending during the booking process. If things end up costing more than you estimated, you gotta write that down, okay? I was constantly like readjusting and like calculating during the booking process. The prices for travel and accommodation are the ones I included in this calculation. So 10 nights of accommodation or overnight bus and 10 days of travel all came out to just over 900 pounds. Um, I will spend more money on food and travel insurance, so I thought I should like give you full disclosure, like there will be more money spent on food and travel insurance, and probably some on sightseeing, but I still expect it to work out to under like 1200, 1100 pounds. So the trip itself is like completely booked. Like, yeah, there'll probably be some discretionary spending, and obviously I gotta eat, and you know, yeah, but, but, like the majority of it is booked, and it was for like only around 100 pounds per country, which is, you know, can you get a better deal than that? Let me know in the comments because I don't think you can. And a final point about safety, okay? So as a solo female traveler, safety is hugely, hugely important. And you know, often there is like a trade-off between like price and safety. Sometimes things that are cheap look a bit dodgy, okay? so. What I wanna say here is that a cheap trip is absolutely not worth sacrificing your safety for, okay? I'm planning to get like a secondary door lock that I can use in my accommodation when I'm alone, and I always make sure that cheap accommodation, especially Airbnbs, is well reviewed. Close to the city center and it has basic security measures. Like generally, if it doesn't have a lock on the bedroom door, I will not book it. Like, end of story, okay? If I get a bad vibe or a gut feeling, even if everything looks great and I just look at it and I'm like, something feels off, then I will not book it, okay? Trust your gut and have some rules in place to make sure that your bookings are safe as well as being cheap, okay? Always spend more for your peace of mind. I do not care if it looks like the bargain of a lifetime. If you get the bad vibes, then absolutely not, okay? Your safety is worth all the money in the world. So please do not sacrifice your safety for the sake of a cheap trip. And if it means like going on a slightly shorter holiday or not seeing as many places, then it's worth it, okay? Because 
there is nothing worse than being like hundreds of miles away from home in a city and feeling unsafe, okay? So please do not do that to yourself. Please be safe. And I hope you have a wonderful holiday if you decide to do that. All right, those are all the tips I have for this video. If you're not already subscribed, make sure to do that. Give this video a thumbs up, follow me on Instagram, and I'll see you guys next time. Happy travels, bye.